Well, here we are once again on this fine December morning. Welcome to everyone. My name's Hunter, and the day is December the 8th. It's a Thursday, day 343 in our journey through the Bible. Every day we take a little time in God's Word. We allow God's Word to take some time on us. And when we do that, we experience change, hope, strength. God meets us through His Word. So let's take this opportunity now to hear from Him. Our reading today is in 1 Timothy chapters 5 and 6, and then we move on to Titus chapters 1 through 3. We're reading through the New Living Translation. Let's jump right in. 1 Timothy chapter 5. Never speak harshly to an older man, but appeal to him respectfully as you would your own father. Talk to younger men as you would to your own brothers. Treat older women as you would your mother, and treat younger women with all purity as you would your own sisters. Take care of any widow who has no one else to care for her, but if she has children or grandchildren, their first responsibility is to show godliness at home and repay their parents for taking care of them. This is something that pleases God. Now a true widow, a woman who is truly alone in this world, has placed her hope in God. She prays night and day, asking God for his help. But the widow who lives only for pleasure is spiritually dead, even while she lives. Give these instructions to the church, so that no one will be open to criticism. But those who won't care for their relatives, especially for those in their own household, have denied the true faith. Such people are worse than unbelievers. A widow who is put on the list for support must be a woman who is at least 60 years old and was faithful to her husband. She must be well respected by everyone because of the good she's done. Has she brought up her children well? Has she been kind to strangers and served other believers humbly? Has she helped those who are in trouble? Has she always been ready to do good? The younger widows should not be on the list because their physical desires will overpower their devotion to Christ and they will want to remarry. Then they would be guilty of breaking their previous pledge. And if they are on the list, they will learn to be lazy and spend their time gossiping from house to house, meddling in other people's business, and talking about things they shouldn't. So I advise these younger widows to marry again, have children, and take care of their own homes. Then the enemy will not be able to say anything against them, for I am afraid that some of them have already gone astray and now follow Satan." If a woman who is a believer has relatives who are widows, she must take care of them and not put the responsibility on the church. Then the church can take care of the widows who are truly alone. Elders who do their work well should be respected and paid well, especially those who work hard at both preaching and teaching. For the scriptures say you must not muzzle an ox to keep it from eating as it treads out the grain. And in another place, those who work deserve their pay. Do not listen to an accusation against an elder unless it is confirmed by two or three witnesses. Those whose sin should be reprimanded in front of the whole church, this will serve as a strong warning to others. I solemnly command you in the presence of God and Christ Jesus and the highest angels to obey these instructions without taking sides or showing favoritism to anyone. Never be in a hurry about appointing a church leader. Do not share in the sins of others. Keep yourself pure. Don't drink only water. You ought to drink a little wine for the sake of your stomach because you're sick so often. Remember, the sins of some people are obvious, leading them to certain judgment. But there are others whose sins will not be revealed until later. In the same way, the good deeds of some people are obvious and the good deeds done in secret will someday come to light. 1 Timothy 6 All slaves should show full respect for their masters, so they will not bring shame on the name of God and his teaching. If the masters are believers, that is no excuse for being disrespectful. Those slaves should work all the harder because their efforts are helping other believers who are well loved. Teach these things, Timothy, and encourage everyone to obey them. Some people may contradict our teaching, but these are the wholesome teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. These teachings promote a godly life. Anyone who teaches something different is arrogant and lacks understanding. Such a person has an unhealthy desire to quibble over the meaning of words. This stirs up arguments, ending in jealousy, division, slander, and evil suspicions. These people always cause trouble. Their minds are corrupt, 
and they have turned their backs on the truth. To them, a show of godliness is just a way to become wealthy. Yet true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. After all, we brought nothing with us when we came into the world, and we can't take anything with us when we leave. So if we have enough food and clothing, let us be content. But people who long to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped in many foolish and harmful desires that plunge them into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, and some people craving money have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. But you, Timothy, are a man of God, so run from all these evil things and pursue righteousness and a godly life along with faith, love, perseverance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight for the true faith. Hold tightly to the eternal life which God has called you, which you have declared so well before many witnesses. And I charge you before God who gives life to all and before Christ Jesus who gave a good testimony before Pontius Pilate that you obey this command without wavering. Then no one can find fault with you from now until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. For at just the right time Christ will be revealed from heaven by the blessed and only Almighty God, the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords. He alone can never die, and he lives in light so brilliant that no human can approach him. No human eye has ever seen him, nor ever will. All honor and power to him forever. Amen. Teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud and not to trust in their money, which is so unreliable. Their trust should be in God, who richly gives us all we need for our enjoyment. Tell them to use their money to do good. They should be rich in good works and generous to those in need. Always be ready to share with others. By doing this, they will be storing up their treasures as a good foundation for the future so that they may experience true life. Timothy, guard what God has entrusted to you. Avoid godless, foolish discussions with those who oppose you with their so-called knowledge. Some people have wandered from the faith by following such foolishness. May God's grace be with you all. Titus chapter 1 This letter is from Paul, a slave of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, I have been sent to proclaim faith to those God has chosen and to teach them to know the truth that shows them how to live godly lives. This truth gives them confidence that they have eternal life, which God, who does not lie, promised them before the world began. And now at just the right time, he has revealed this message, which we announce to everyone. It is by the command of God our Savior that I have been entrusted with this work for him. I am writing to Titus, my true son in the faith, that we share. May God the Father and Christ Jesus our Savior give you grace and peace. I left you on the island of Crete so you could complete your work there and appoint elders in each town as I instructed you. An elder must live a blameless life. He must be faithful to his wife and his children must be believers who don't have a reputation for being wild or rebellious. An elder is a manager of God's household, so he must live a blameless life. He must not be arrogant or quick-tempered, he must not be a heavy drinker, violent, or dishonest with money. Rather, he must enjoy having guests in his home, and he must love what is good. He must live wisely and be just. He must live a devout and disciplined life. He must have a strong belief in the trustworthy message he was taught. Then he will be able to encourage others with wholesome teaching and show those who oppose it where they are wrong. For there are many rebellious people who engage in useless talk and deceive others, this is especially true of those who insist on circumcision for salvation. They must be silenced because they are turning whole families away from the truth by their false teaching. And they do it only for money. Even one of their own men, a prophet from Crete, has said about them, The people of Crete are all liars, cruel animals, and lazy gluttons. This is true, so reprimand them strongly to make them strong in the faith. They must stop listening to Jewish myths and the commands of people who have turned away from the truth. Everything is pure to those whose hearts are pure, but nothing is pure to those who are corrupt and unbelieving, because their minds and consciences are corrupt. Such people claim to know God, but they deny Him by the way they live. They are detestable and disobedient, worthless for doing anything good. Titus 2 As for you, Titus, 
promote the kind of living that reflects wholesome teaching, teach the older men to exercise self-control, to be worthy of respect, and to live wisely. They must have sound faith and be filled with love and patience. Similarly, teach older women to live in a way that honors God. They must not slander others or be heavy drinkers. Instead, they should teach others what is good. These older women must train the younger women to love their husbands and their children, to live wisely and to be pure, to work in their homes, to do good and to be submissive to their husbands. Then they will not bring shame on the word of God. In the same way, encourage young men to live wisely, and you yourself must be an example to them by doing good works of every kind. Let everything you do reflect the integrity and seriousness of your teaching. Teach the truth so that your teaching can't be criticized. Then those who oppose us will be ashamed and have nothing to say about us. Slaves must always obey their masters and do their best to please them. They must not talk back or steal, but must show themselves to be entirely trustworthy and good. Then they will make the teaching about God our Savior attractive in every way. For the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people. And we are instructed to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures we should live in this evil world with wisdom, righteousness, and devotion to God, while we look forward with hope to that wonderful day when the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be revealed. He gave us life to free us from every kind of sin, to cleanse us, and to make us His very own people, totally committed to doing good deeds. You must teach these things and encourage the believers to do them. You have the authority to correct them when necessary. So don't let anyone disregard what you say. Titus 3. Remind the believers to submit to the government and its officers. They should be obedient, always ready to do what is good. They must not slander anyone and must avoid quarreling. Instead, they should be gentle and show true humility to everyone. Once we too were foolish and disobedient, we were misled and became slaves to many lusts and pleasures. Our lives were full of evil and envy, and we hated each other. But when God our Savior revealed His kindness and love, He saved us, not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of His mercy. He washed away our sins, giving us new birth and new life through the Holy Spirit, he generously poured out the Spirit upon us through Jesus Christ our Savior. Because of His grace, He declared us righteous and gave us confidence that we will inherit eternal life. This is a trustworthy saying, and I want you to insist on these teachings so that all who trust in God will devote themselves to doing good. These teachings are good and beneficial for everyone. Do not get involved in foolish discussions about spiritual pedigrees or in quarreling and fights about obedience to Jewish laws. These things are useless and a waste of time. If people are causing division among you, give a first and second warning, and after that, have nothing more to do with them. For people like that have turned away from the truth, and their own sins condemn them. I am planning to send either Artemis or Tychius to you, as soon as one of them arrives, do your best to meet me at Nicopolis, for I have decided to stay there for the winter. Do everything you can to help Zenus, the lawyer, and Apollos with their trip. See that they are given everything they need. Our people must learn to do good by meeting the urgent needs of others. Then they will not be unproductive. Everyone here sends greetings. Please send my greetings to the believers, all who love us. May God's grace be with you all. And may God add his blessing to this, the reading of his word. Amen. There's only one hope for Cretans like me. <laughs> That's the gospel. Oh, Titus, he was given the impossible task of taking the gospel, establishing a church among Cretans. <laughs> People who were legendary in their waywardness in their rebellion in their debauchery they were so notorious for this way of life that we still use the word today we call someone a cretin if we don't think they uh, 
they have much integrity or they have much couth about themselves. So Titus was given the impossible task of planting a church among Cretans. And the truth be told, you don't have to scratch the surface very far in most of our lives before you find a little Cretan in all of us. Paul admits to that here in verse 3 in chapter 3. He says, Once we too were foolish and disobedient. In other words, we were just like these Cretans. We were misled and we became slaves to many lusts and pleasures. Our lives were full of evil and envy and we hated each other. Paul says, you know what? We're all Cretans when it comes down to it. But Paul also says this, and he wants to make sure that Titus, well, that this is Titus's message in verse 4. But when God our Savior revealed his kindness and love, he saved us. When kindness and love comes around, my friend, you can expect the impossible. You can expect a leopard to lose his stripes. You can expect a Cretan like me to become a Christian, not because they've learned how to reform their life through pious self-denial or shaping up and sailing right. No, these Cretans, this Cretan here, he's been saved because of God's kindness and love, not because of the righteous things he's done but because of God's mercy. God has washed away our sins, giving us new birth and new life through the Holy Spirit. He generously pours out the Spirit upon us through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Because of his grace, he declares us Crete no more. He declares us righteous and he gives us confidence that we will inherit eternal life. Even Cretans like me, What a gift. What an amazing gift. When kindness and love come around, you can expect the impossible, my friend. You can expect a new life. The prayer of my own heart today is that I will see that kindness and love has come around. Johnny Cash sings a song. It's called When a Man Comes Around. He's talking about Jesus. Well, my friends, kindness and love has come around in a man. Our man, Jesus. And because he did come around, well, I have new life and you have new life. I want to rejoice in that today. I want to let that be my guiding light. That's what I want for my family. I want that for my wife, for my daughters, for my son. And that's what I want for you. And that can be so. Hallelujah. Hey, dailyradiobible.com, that's, of course, where we hang our hat out here in the interwebs, and it is always a great thing to hear from you. I always appreciate hearing your story, finding out who you are, where you're from, how you stumbled upon this podcast. With that in mind, I want to send a shout out to a few folks, to Sandra from Houston, Texas. Sandra, blessings to you and your Bible study, all the ladies there. Blessings to you. One of these days I'm going to get out there to Houston. My brother and sister live there, and uh, I would love to visit. If I do, how about we have some sweet tea? (laughs) I also want to send a shout out to Sharon from Hoptown, that is Hopkinsville, Kentucky. Sharon, great to hear from you. I have lots of family there in Hoptown. That's where the progenitors of the Barnes clan come from. Lots of kin run deep there in Hopkinsville. One of these days I'm going to get back there too and we'll have to grab a burger at Farrell's. Hey, whether you're from Houston or from Hoptown, Kentucky, or whether you're from Kuwait City, Kuwait, I just want to let you know that I feel so honored and privileged to be on this journey with you. Hey, I've got two favors and a date I want to run by you. 
One favor is this. Will you go to the iTunes store and or Google Play if you are an Android user and write a review at the App Store on the Daily Radio Bible? It's a huge help. You know, here in the next few weeks, people are going to be focusing in on New Year's resolutions. So many folks are going to be thinking about reading the Bible more this upcoming year. And your reviews make finding this app so much easier for folks. So will you go to the iTunes store and Google Play and offer us up a review? Speaking of the end of the year, I know that many of you are considering your end of year giving. Might I ask you to consider the Daily Radio Bible? This ministry doesn't happen without faithful partners coming alongside and saying, Hunter, I want to be a part of this. I absolutely love and am committed to making sure that this ministry happens for free, that the app and all the resources are offered free of charge. And yet there are resources of both time and money that are required to make this available to folks. Your partnership makes that happen. So please consider the Daily Radio Bible in your end of year giving. Your gifts are tax deductible. We've tried to make giving very convenient. You can go to the dailyradiobible.com website and click on the partner link and you're off and running there. You can also give directly from the phone itself. Just click on the donate link on your, on your app. Or if you're old school and you want to mail your gift in, you can mail your gift to Daily Radio Bible, 7216 Rolling Oaks Court, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45239. Okay, the last thing is a date, March 19th through the 27th, nine amazing days in the Holy Land, walking in the footsteps of Jesus, experiencing the land and the word in ways that will blow your mind. Hey, I would love for you to join me on this once in a lifetime journey. Consider it. I'd love for you to join me on this. Think of it as a Christmas gift to yourself or to another. Come to the Holy Land. It truly is life-changing. Well, hey, my friends, we have done this again. We have spent another day in the Bible, and I plan on being back here again tomorrow to do the same thing. Lord willing, and the creek don't rise, I fully intend to be here. Until that time, you go forward. Go forward in God's joy. You let his joy be your strength, and you remember this, that you are loved. No doubt about it. All right, I'll talk to you again tomorrow. You guys take care. Bye-bye.